One of my favorite genres while growing up was the arcade style run and gun. Games like Contra were a staple of my NES diet, and that continued well into the 16-bit era with greats like Gunstar Heroes and Midnight Resistance. When the Saturn and PlayStation burst onto the scene, this type of game quietly was put on the back burner, and you just didn't see many of them anymore. But in 1996, Nazca Corporation developed Metal Slug for the then 6-year-old Neo Geo platform. It took the gameplay you knew so well from previous games, but cranked up the animation and detail far above anything we'd seen before. Previous running guns on the Neo Geo didn't have the same look and feel of this one, a fact that instantly brought the game tons of appeal, particularly for those looking to play Contra-style titles with more modern graphics. It was a massive hit for Nazca and SNK, and there would be a number of ports to other platforms, including SNK's own Neo Geo CD. In 1997, SNK used that Neo Geo CD version to port the game to the Sega Saturn. Since the cartridge version came in at a whopping 193 megs, there was no way the Saturn was going to do it justice without the use of the extended RAM cartridge. The question was, even with it, did the Saturn come through with arcade perfection, or did it crash and burn, leaving much to be desired? In this episode, we will find out just how well Metal Slug translated to Sega's 2D powerhouse. The story of Metal Slug has the Rebel Army led by General Morden overthrowing the world's governments. With its vast manpower and weaponry, it quickly overwhelms the regular army at every turn. That's where you come in as a member of the elite Peregrine Falcon Strike Force. You must infiltrate the enemy and undermine their actions every chance you get. Metal Slug starts out with you parachuting into enemy territory and bringing your brand of justice to the Rebel Army. You are merciless in your advance, mowing down countless foes with machine guns, flamethrowers, shotguns, missile launchers, and yes, the titular Super Vehicle 001 Metal Slug, a miniature tank that can jump, duck, and fire powerful artillery. The gameplay is of course run and gun style action with some light platforming here and there. Weapons are dropped frequently so you can continue your killing spree pretty much non-stop. POWs are sprinkled throughout each level and should you rescue them, they give you weapons and score bonuses to help you out. Every so often you'll come across a metal slug you can use, which has its own life bar and weapon count. And that's it, that's all there is to this one. Run, jump, and gun down your enemies, just like a good shooter should. Most of the bad guys you face will be foot soldiers and their vehicles. You'll have to avoid grenades, missiles, and bullets if you want to see the end. The six stages you'll face are a variety of terrain from city streets to vertical cliffs. You start out with five credits with up to five men per credit. There is an easy, normal, and hard mode to work your way through, and after you beat that, there is a combat school where you can play a survival mode to see how far you can get on a single life. This adds some much needed variety to a game that can be beaten in about 30 minutes or so. There is of course a two-player mode, should you enjoy some couch co-op. Metal Slug was a great looking Neo Geo game in 1996. Even though the Polygon Revolution was fully upon us, its animation and detail still held up as a visual treat. The move to Saturn was going to come with some caveats no matter what. The Saturn's meager amount of RAM was well below even the Neo Geo CDs, even with the extended RAM cartridge. Believe it or not, the old Saturn does a fine job of capturing all that great looking animation here. Enemies explode, burn up, and bleed pretty much just like they did on the original Neo, and you'll get all those great background effects intact. From a purely visual standpoint, the Saturn does an excellent job of recreating the original right down to the smallest details. Things really don't start slipping up until the screen gets loaded down with tons of sprites. Performance dips come often and with it, 
laggy response to your controls. In much of the game, this doesn't pose a problem. You'll feel some slowdown for a bit and move past it pretty quickly. But when you do get a bad stretch of it, it can be debilitating to both gameplay and the on-screen action. It's well in excess of the Neo Geo original at times and occurs more frequently overall. I wouldn't call it game-breaking, nor does it make this version tough to play, but it's there and something to be considered. The sound effects of Metal Slug are actually the weakest part of its presentation. While it retains most of the iconic voices, screams, and weapon fire from the Neo Geo original, they are of decidedly lower quality here. No doubt a side effect of the major differences in memory. I don't recommend cranking the volume up super high, but at least it does get the job done. The music, of course, is straight off the CD, so it sounds fine. I have a few samples captured directly from the Saturn so you can hear it for yourself. If you are a veteran of the Neo Geo, the biggest hurdle you'll find to enjoying Metal Slug on the Saturn is its performance and its sound. It's noticeably lower quality in these regards, and you will likely thumb your nose up at it. If you don't have any such bias, this can still be a great experience. It plays well enough most of the time, and the visuals and animation are pretty much spot on. It carries over a number of features of the Neo Geo CD release as well. Once you beat a level, it becomes available to play any time. You get an art gallery, the previously mentioned combat school, and sound and music tests. If you collect for the Saturn, it's a solid running gun to add to your collection, especially in the absence of a Contra or Gunstar Heroes release of similar quality. This genre took a major nosedive in number of releases and quality during this generation of machines, which in turn makes the Saturn edition something to consider even though it has its problems. I'd even go so far as to say many of you won't even care about much of the discrepancies because the genre is so incredibly underrepresented on the Saturn. The kicker is, is that modern versions of Metal Slug are arcade perfect emulations that can be had for as little as a few bucks. That creates a line that will divide the vast majority of you. For you collectors, it's a fun piece of Saturn history that gave us a Neo Geo game at home for a fraction of the price of the cartridge. You'll want it in your collection, particularly if you're a fan of the genre. For the rest that just want to play Metal Slug, I'd advise you chase down a modern console version due to its easy availability and super cheap asking price. You won't have to deal with the gray market insanity nor the downgrades that plague the Saturn port. These types of ports are always interesting to discuss. While it may not be 100% accurate, it's certainly still fun and capable of being a really good experience. But there is no doubt that its appeal will greatly depend on what else you may own that you can play it on. A quick scan of eBay's sold items shows that Metal Slug for the Saturn can vary wildly in price, from as little as $50 to as much as $100 plus. You can get it in both standalone and RAM cart packages, which does affect the pricing. This puts it a bit more expensive than the awful PlayStation version, but cheaper than the Neo Geo CD release. Modern digital alternatives cost $8 when not on sale. 
Like many games of its type, these details and options will divide its worth to most of you. There's nothing quite like owning a physical copy of a game to some, while the cheapo digital emulation is perfectly fine for others. Taken on its own merits, I think that games like Metal Slug for the Saturn are important pieces of gaming history. We didn't always have a ton of options like we do today, and seeing a game like this run on different hardware always had a certain level of curiosity to it. This was at a time where how much RAM a CD-based console had was a really big deal, and always had an effect on how games looked and ran. For years, the massive sizes of Neo Geo games made its games special because few other platforms could replicate them accurately. Even though the Saturn was quite efficient at 2D rendering, this game was not originally designed for it from the ground up, ensuring the original Neo Geo release was still the best way to play it. That's still true today, but if you're a diehard Saturn fan looking for some run and gun action, you can do much, much worse than Metal Slug here. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.